Welcome to the Monday, June 11, 2018 meeting of the Green Bay Planning Commission. Uh, first item on the agenda is roll call. Timothy Gover, Chair, is present. Sydney Bremer, Sydney Bremer, Vice Chair. Present. Alderman, Alderperson Veronica Corpus Tax. Present. Lisa Hansen is absent. Jacob Miller. Present. Randy Kratowski is absent. And Jerry Wisbisky is absent. But we do have a quorum, so we will proceed. Uh, item B, approval of the agenda. Move to approve it. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed? Oh, do we have to do something to record our votes again? I don't think that is. No, Good. No. Thank you. Thank you. Just for the items. Good. Next order of business, election of officers. And for this, I will recuse myself and turn over the chair to the director. All right, so we are looking for, um, we have the election of officers, we need a chair and a vice chair. Do we have any nominations for a chair of the plan commission? I'd like to nominate Tim Gilbert with thanks for the excellent job he's done this past year. Okay, are there any other nominations for chair? We need a second for that too. Is there a second? We, we do need a second then? Yep. Second. Okay, are there any other nominations for chair? Are there any other nominations for chair? Uh, being none, all those in favor of Timothy Gilbert being chair of the plan commission, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. I'll turn it back over to you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Uh, next position is vice chair. Do we have any nominations for the position of vice chair? I'll nominate Sydney. Okay, we have a nomination for Sydney Bremer. Do we have a second? I will second. Okay, we have a nomination and a second for Sydney Bremer for vice chair. Are there any further nominations? Are there any other nominations for vice chair? Are there any other nominations for vice chair? Hearing none, I move we vote on the petition. All those in favor of Sydney Bremer being vice chair of the Planning Commission? Can you probably say aye? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Congratulations, Sid. Thank you. <laughs> okay, next mm -hmm. item, next position is secretary. Um, do, we have, do we need to vote on that one? Typically, yes. Okay. It'd be Kevin Bonk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to nominate Kevin Bonk for that position. <laughs> um, I'll have that not up. heard any <laughs> objection from him in advance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so he did not that. tell me of any objection before. <laughs> so. And he's not here. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a uh, Nomination and a second for Kevin Vance as Secretary of Plan Commission. Are there any other nominations for secretaries? Are there any other nominations for secretary? Are there any other nominations for secretary? Hearing none, I move we vote for Kevin Vance as Vice Ch as a Secretary of the Plan Commission. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Kevin is Secretary for the year. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes of the May 7th meeting. Move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the May 7th, 2018 meeting. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor of approval, second prior saying aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? If I could. Um, yes. Mr. Chair, these are no longer really minutes. They're now a record of votes. Um, and I just wanted to note that for the record and also ask, do we know at this point how to access the videotape? Because I'm also not seeing what used to be in the minutes, the, the timestamp for the video. The video should be available on the city's website mm -hmm. down under the agenda item and the minutes item. So they're not verbatim minutes necessarily that are available at this point. 
Well, they're also not summary minutes. They really say nothing about the substance behind the votes. So really just the decisions. Of yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And what I'm looking for is some kind of guidance for accessing the videotape and being able to find the point in the meeting to which that record refers. We can review it after the meeting if you want. Maybe we can show you a path on how to get going. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Harry, no opposed. Uh, the approval of the minutes has passed. Next item, regular business. Item one, consideration with possible action on a request mm -hmm. to amend the previously approved conditional use permit to allow a car wash in the community center commercial district located at 1053 Belt Avenue, submitted by Kurt Bollinger, Stone Stonewide Holdings, LLC, property owner. Thank you, Madam Mr. Chair. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I know I need air. This is a familiar request. This is a request to amend previously approved conditional use permit for a car wash mm -hmm. at 1053 Belt Avenue. The previous request was before the Planning Commission on May 7th, which you recommend approval with conditions. It was approved by the Council on May 15th. The request has changed. Um, the, that original request had the car washed to Single Bay on the west side of the building. It has now changed to the east side of the building. So, again, this is the subject property here highlighted in red. Uh, that initial car wash was on the west side, now it's proposed on the east side. Uh, Atkinson Drive, Belt Avenue, Gray Street, the kind of general location. Um, again, this is part of kind of a commercial corridor as recommend, recommended by the city's comprehensive plan. Uh, currently has a community center uh, C3 zoning district with some low density residential uh, to the south uh, and some light and heavier industrial to the north. So this is a revised site plan showing the site, again, Atkinson, the roundabout, and Belt Avenue here. This is the east side of the building here. Again, it was previously shown on this side uh, here. The unique thing about this change is, as you can see, the buildings may be slightly skewed a little bit. So on the west side, where it was recommended for approval, it's a little larger, the distance between the property line and the edge of that building. What happens is it starts to narrow a little bit to this point here. You can kind of see the entrance way for the car wash. That kind of becomes a pinch point. It gets really tight in there. And maneuvering would be very challenging. So again, the conversion of that space to a single bay car wash, they have retained some transparency as it appears uh, from the south side here. Um, and then I provided some photos that kind of show the exact situation here. This is the corner in question. This would be the entrance to the future car wash here. Uh, this is the end of Coppins Court, and then this is the rear of the property. So this is the distance that we're concerned about here. It's about 20 feet or so um, in width. Another perspective, this is a city vehicle. You can see there's probably just barely enough room for two vehicles to pass in this particular area. Um, another perspective, again, Someone entering that car wash here, there's very little room on that side to, to gain access through or even have traffic going both ways. So that really is kind of our major concern. We did recommend approval of the original request on the west side. It's kind of changed now where we recommend denial of the request because of that concern about the circulation or that pinch point on that corner. Um, and we are recommending denial. We did notice property owners. I did receive uh, an email today that I forwarded to the commission members. Uh, this is a neighbor who had concerns previously and has just uh, on that passed along. So uh, that is our recommendation tonight. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chair, you have any discussion among the commissioners? Do we have anybody to speak on this? We do. Yes. We do. Yes. Okay. The applicant is here. Mm -hmm. We have a motion on the floor. We do, yes. Mm -hmm. Motion on the floor. Second. We have a motion and a second to open the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, the applicant is here, I believe. Yes. Do you wish to speak on this? No. Um, well. I'm the neighbor that lives right behind the gas station. <coughs> okay, will you step forward and state your name and address for the record? Uh, Tom Sislovich, 1045 Coppins Road. I live on the cul-de-sac behind, right where the car wash would be, basically. This unit here. Okay. okay. So, 
Um, my wife and I, we have no problem with the car wash being there. Um, we sat out front, listened to the noise, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, preferably, we would have liked it up on Velp Avenue on that lot that the city doesn't want to sell them. I think that would be ideal. As far as that, we, we see no problem. The entering in the backside, the noise going out forward, uh, doors going shut. Um, different neighbors that I talked to that live right by us had no problem with it either. Um, the drive thing, it's kind of out of my hands. Um, you can make it one way, block so people can't go the other way. I don't know, that's somebody else's. So, as far as my wife, myself, and some of the neighbors, we have no problem. Okay. Thank you. Uh, David O'Brien, 3323 Bay Ridge Court. Uh, we are aware of uh, the traffic circulation in the back, and what we're proposing to do is just make it one way. And the re only reason for that being is if somebody needs to, if, if they're in line and they need to get out, and they can, uh, it's an emergency exit only, and there'd be signs, and also the painted on the asphalt one way traffic. Mm -hmm. And basically, I don't know, a quarter of the way down that down the building, uh, it would, of course, create back to two way, but you, you, we do not want anybody going through that pinch point. This would all be, uh, there'd be a sign, or as you can see in the plan, it will say no direct vehicle access allowed. Now, can you stop it? No. The only way we could stop it is if we curved it properly so that it'd almost be impossible for them to move in there. But we prefer not to do that. Commissioner Bremer. If you could please, and I know you addressed this in your application, but I, I'd like to hear it from you again. Sure. Explain the reason for the move because the the western side was much further from the residence. Correct. The reason it, it's uh, being proposed to move is where the proposed car wash is going to go on this side. There's already <coughs> a firewall in there, and this is building code wise. So all we have to do is put another block wall against that existing block wall to support our roof system in there, and it just to put it on the other side. You're disturbing. Two tenants? two tenants? Two tenants that we'd have to start messing around with the inside of that building. And it just, it's really, really, it's cost, per, it's not cost per but it's, it's a lot more costly. Where this is just clean. It's block wall goes up, we put the uh, uh, block walls all around it, and it's done. On the other side, it's a whole other ball. Mm -hmm. you got to relocate the restaurant, and then there's also a hair salon in there, mm -hmm. they, they would all have to move that would uh, interrupt their business for a short period of time. And we decided, we came up with this idea probably about two weeks after the Plant Commission board the first time. Mm -hmm. When we looked at it, and it just, it just makes sense. And the southeast corner involves moving nobody. It's nobody. already available, empty space. That's correct. Well, there's somebody in there, but he's uh, moving out. Okay. And Mm -hmm. less uh, intrusive on the uh, tenants that are in there right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this item? Second to close the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Commissioner Grimmer. I am in the position of agreeing with the staff um, that this does does have a detrimental impact on the adjoining residences and I appreciate very much 
the support that the neighbors are giving to this. But you'll remember that there was a very recent uh, ruling from the state legislature that we, I guess that refers to conditional use permits, right? Yes, oh. right. Yeah, that uh, simply the fact of neighborhood support or neighborhood objection um, was not reason to vote one way or the other. And I did not, do not, and did not like that law. And I understand that it's not binding here because this is not a conditional use permit, right? This is a conditional use permit. Oh, it is? OK. So it's binding here. So the fact that neighbors are supporting it is not reason to pass it. Um, or, or any or. information that they give in their support or objections would be something for us to take into effect, but simply it's not a matter of residents voting on it. And I'm concerned about future residents as well as those that are not right here. And there is quite a difference between uh, the location proposed here and the location previously proposed. And I also very much appreciate your concern with the tenants in the building and with not disrupting their business. Um, that's, that certainly is problematic for the other location, but it's an immediate problem as opposed to the long-term results of actually having the car wash uh, built at the end. So I present that to my colleagues as my concern right now, um, as much as I appreciate both the support from the neighbors and uh, the concern with the tenants. So I'll be eager to hear what the others have to say. Thank you. I'll go. Okay. Commissioner Bermetmore. Uh, a question to staff, was this the one-way proposal taken into account before um, your, I guess, recommendation on there? No, it wasn't. We just learned about that today. Okay. Um, the, I, one, the one response to that, I think, is, and I can't speak for the fire marshals, they need 20 feet of access around the building, mm -hmm. as well as access to a fire hydrant. So I think that, would, that, would that be might enough. present a problem here to, okay. again, a technical issue of presenting a problem around the building. But we don't know whether it's 20 feet or not. It is 20 feet. That, it that's is. their standard. I just can't speak oh, for okay. what I'm saying. I'm relating past experience. Yeah. That's a distance that they require. So this distance. meets that standard. It does. Just. Yeah. But the curbing and everything that may have been considered would definitely have an impact there. It, it could, yes. Um, I, I guess bouncing off that, then I, I hate to say, should we send this back then for further review? to see if the one way is even feasible, whether it be through the fire marshal or whatever else needs to be taken a look at. Because it, do, it does appear that uh, petitioner is trying to work with us on here, so is it worth another look at? I think they're looking for unobstructed access. So if there's, if there's even one car there, I think that presents a problem for them to, mm -hmm. to respond. Again, I can't speak for the fire marshal. I don't have a comment because this is something we just learned recently, but uh, that's been my past experience. I tend to concur with Commissioner Brimmer, um, irregardless of the fire marshal's position on this. Um, I, I, I simply don't think this is a good fit for for the, this location. Um, the west side would have been much better. I mean, obviously, this is easier. But I don't. That doesn't, that doesn't make it better. Uh, so I'm gonna probably side with the staff on this one. Is there any further discussion? If not, the chair would entertain a motion. Yes. Um, Go ahead. I'm just going to support uh, Jake's thought that we do ask for. Uh, input from the fire marshal since the pinch point is a particular thing and I appreciate very much your your work to figure out a way to avoid that problem. I would feel much more comfortable with a, a decision that included that information. So perhaps uh, then having said that I would move to table this until our next meeting or until we can get the information from the fire marshal. Okay, so we have a motion to table. We have, second. Second. We, have second. we have a motion and a second to table this until the next meeting or until the fire marshal can weigh in on the matter. Uh, any further discussion on that? 
I just say, expand on my point. I wouldn't be comfortable approving at this point, so it would either be denial or a hold, and I think a hold is probably appropriate at this point, just to at least have the fire marshal review and have them take it. I mean, if they haven't had a chance to even look at this, I think it's <coughs> worth at least giving them that option. So I would also approve the hold. Okay. Any further discussion? Very none. I would ask that you we um, vote. 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 I can't remember how to vote on this thing. She helped you. She helped you. Sorry, There we go. Get it? Yep. Yes. Okay, and this is the motion to table. Mm -hmm. Yes or no, abstain. But what are we? It's not clear what's being voted on. Oh, but this is a motion to table. Motion to table. Okay. Save. Got it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Item two. Consideration with possible action on a request to create a planned unit development at 320 South Military Avenue, slash 1600 Block Western Avenue. Submitted by David Merton, H.J. Merton, property owner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a request to create a plan unit development for 320 South Military and the 1600 block of Western Avenue. Uh, this is in the city's west side, um, Military Avenue, running north and south, um, Western Avenue running east and west here. Uh, this is the subject site, H.J. Uh, Merton. It's about 12 acres in size. They have properties on both the north and south side about seven acres on the north, about five acres on the south, and it's comprised of several different parcels that will eventually I suppose be combined into one tax parcel. Um, this is a commercial corridor. Uh, there's some railroad tracks that run through here, Shopko stores to the uh, north, um, uh, Michaels and a commercial development to the south fronting on uh, Mason Street, and there's multi-family development down Western Avenue. Uh, the city's comprehensive plan recommends commercial land uses in this particular area. This is part of the Military Avenue Redevelopment Plan, where the plan does didn't make any recommendations for land use. So we're looking at just simply the uh, city's comprehensive plan. There are a variety of uh, zoning uh, districts here. So there's some C1 up on Military. There's actually some light industrial zoning here with this crosshatch. Uh, very densely residential and then some general commercial again. So it's kind of a mixture of zoning. We're trying to bring that all together under one zoning district here. So there's kind of a hybrid of uses here. There's some commercial, there's some manufacturing, there's some processing and distribution that's going on currently. And the current zoning doesn't quite address some of that needs for expansion. So this is kind of a, the need for the plan unit development to help bring some of those land uses together. So this is a concept plan that was provided by the applicant. Um, basically, again, this is military and western here. Uh, this is their current retail operation. Uh, they have offices here. There is a current distribution facility here. Uh, another property down here that I think also has some light production processing. These areas are kind of cross-hatched, and yellow represent kind of the expansion areas. Mm -hmm. So there's some uh, training areas that they hope to expand to the east here expansion of the distribution facility on this side towards Perkin, uh, Perkins Avenue and then kind of a storage garage down here with the parking lot to kind of shift some of the parking demand from this north side down into this uh, storage garage. Um, so they're really kind of trying to maximize the campus here the best they can. They have existing access on Perkins. They would add another driveway cut here and another one on Western to kind of better um, have the site flow, I guess, so to speak. So uh, they've provided some images here. This is the south side of Western Avenue. This kind of represents looking down Western. Uh, this is looking towards uh, Mason and the commercial. This is the storage garage that's proposed. And this is the major expansion of the distribution facility. So this is Perkins and Western looking towards Military Avenue. So this is kind of the west side of that expansion of the, uh, that area with uh, several overhead doors here, but some landscaping help provide a buffer transition. Um, so there's a draft ordinance that's attached within your agenda. We tried to work with the developer, the owner, to kind of come up with some standards to allow them to expand. 
uh, some of those hybrid uses that they have uh, and proposed to do. So our recommendation tonight is approval of the request. Uh, we've had a few inquiries, but no objections to the request. Uh, the applicant is here tonight if you have more detailed questions about the operation. Thank you. Commissioner Grimmer. I have some very brief questions sure. about what we're looking at here. Uh, using the draft PUD as a reference point as well as our other ordinances, is the additional parking there adequate for it, the expansion that is being proposed? Conceptually it is, yes. Okay. So, I mean, there's a higher demand here for parking in the retail, mm -hmm. but with the light processing and manufacturing, there's probably less of the use. Okay. Well, they do have several employees that do have a lot of need for parking, but I don't think it's an exceed mm -hmm. the code store. And then you showed us exhibits B and C, uh, the image exhibits. Uh, is the architecture there uh, adequate to meet the PUD's architectural requirements? I believe it does. This is okay. kind of their theme, or at least color and, and mm -hmm. style of the existing facility, so yes. I, I so it does go well with the existing facility. Yes. And is it the opinion of the staff that it's adequate for the Military Avenue upgrade? I believe so, yeah. I mean, there's, again, kind of a unique use where we've got some commercial and mm -hmm. uh, light processing and manufacturing lines. So there's, it's, it kind of exceeds some of the commercial aspect of it, but it kind of blends together as well as part of their operation. Okay. Of course, it's not on military. Right. It's one of the it's off. Right. Thank you. Those were the only questions I had, just to confirm. Sure. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Move to open the floor. Can you have a motion? Anybody ask a question on this uh, proposal? Once we open the floor. Okay. We have a motion to open the floor. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to open the floor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a question. Okay, just a minute, sir. Um, <coughs> um, okay, would you come up to the podium, sir, and okay. state your name and address? Um, my name is Woon Chen. W O O N, last name C H A N. Mm -hmm. I'm the uh, property owner of uh, three units along the South uh, Military Avenue. Uh, the number is 416, 418, and 420 South Military Avenue. Perhaps you could point to where those units are. Right. Right now. Uh, let me see. Okay, military is the one that's running. The military is here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, correct. And then uh, Western Avenue, this one? No, uh, no, no the next one. one. Next no. one up. Next one up. This one, Western Avenue. No, that's Mason. This one, There's yeah. Western. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And I believe that, okay, this is in here. Okay. Mine okay. is probably, probably this three. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then, uh, this is the parking lot in the front. Correct. Mm -hmm. This is the backyard. Yep. Yes. Uh, this is a Martin's uh, property. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a parking lot for them. And then there's a row for many years. I don't know how many, 50, 100, whatever. And the, the supply truck, there's a big truck. Mm -hmm. And you come in and then uh, they go into here and supply goods mm -hmm. to any one of those uh, property owner. Including so we have probably 13 units or whatever. I, I got three of them. Mm -hmm. So mine is a restaurant. I went to somebody else to do the business. And there's a Mayflower restaurant next to us. Mm -hmm. And also there's some retail thing, uh, places and some office. Mm -hmm. And we rely the backyard to have enough space mm -hmm. for the big truck to come in to supply raw material for their business. They probably deliver finished product out of it. Uh, yes. I have, we have no problem for uh, F.J. Martin to develop this plan. But my concern is, I don't know whether they consider that if they put a fence, an uh, enclosed fence for the parking lot, and I'm not sure except if they, the lot line in between, in between the both a lot, uh, Martin's lot and also our lot belong to the Westgate Association. Uh, assuming the middle of the road, 
and they, they put a fence right on the line, mm -hmm. and we won't have uh, enough space for the big truck to come in. Now, which we use for both uh, uh, on both sides contribute to the space for the world for many years to supply mm -hmm. more material. Mm -hmm. So, so when they develop it, I hope that they can consider to leave enough space on the right hand side plus our half of it. And the road is big enough for the big truck to go in, uh, which they may also need the service of the road too, you know, because they're backyard. So this is my concern and suggestion uh, for us to uh, consider. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you for your concern. Would anybody else like to speak on this matter? Sure. Thank you, Paul. My name's David Martin with H.J. Martin. I can answer any questions that you have, but I can talk briefly about the expansion and the need for it. So um, my family is lucky enough to be a part of military Avenue since 1959. And obviously, we have the best interest within the, the area, and we want to expand within our current footprint right now. Currently, our business has doubled within the past eight years with employee count and volume. So we need to expand. Well, a lot of our property owners are requiring us to have a lot of inventory for flooring, drywall, and everything like that nationwide. So the objective, we only have 42,000 square feet here. It would be to fill the L, so we don't have to have all the material in two different places. Right now, we have the former Menards building on Wabi Lane. We use that for training and for storage. So we want to consolidate all at one once that is redeveloped. In addition, we are not touching anything in this area. We currently lease this to Seaway and then also have our glass fabrication where we cut a lot of the aluminum and then ship it logistically to job sites. So we want a um, parking structure here, like Paul said, to not only cover the expansion for parking, but to also help us logistically as we have trucks currently stored within the building right here and every time there's a delivery that comes in with a flatbed carrying aluminum they have to back out and it's it's not that efficient so this would help in that cause. Um, we currently have a lot of property that's owner occupied so that, that's one of the main reasons why we continue to do that over time is to help uh, with the eyes you know and the vision for expansion so we're asking for your support and you know, we'll act in the, in the best interest of the neighbors in the area, and I can answer any questions right now. Thank you. Commissioner Verma. So just to follow up Mr. Uh, Chen's concern, right. there will be no impact on no. that area of driving in for the delivery trucks and turning around in the uh, parking area. That's correct. We currently have an office here that's connected to our fabrication. We are not touching this. We do not own this piece of property where Vanderloop shoes, the bakery, and the sunshine spot. Hopefully one day we can acquire that with, uh, with the current property owner support, but we, we are not touching that area right now. Seaway is expanding to the west, and that's why we need this additional space as well. They're taking some of the area that we occupy right now because they are building a new, or have a new machine in that area. Thank you. Yeah. Would anybody else care to speak on this item? Yes, sir. My name is David Michaud, and I'm a property owner at 1651 Western Avenue, which is probably right in here. Yeah. I'm just concerned about building the water runoff. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I guess. I'm concerned about that in easement on the front, but it looks like that would be a parking lot. Correct. I'm just concerned about the water. Yes, no, that's a good concern. If I could, you want me to yes. come up? Okay. Please. <clears throat> I talked to uh, Mr. Bigelow, and he had the same concern because right here, these apartments are, it looks like a two story building, but they're actually three, the lower level. Um, yeah, it, so the grade would have to be below that, so no runoff of water would 
impact uh, their building. So we would make sure, David, on yours, that we could okay. have the same uh, approach there. Thank you. Would anybody else care to speak on this? Then I move we close return to normal order of business. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second to return to further order of business. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are back. Any further discussion among the commissioners? No. Hearing none, the chair would entertain a motion. I move to approve in line with the staff's recommendation, so particularly since the questions seem to me to have been adequately answered. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the recommendation. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I would ask that you place your vote now. <laughs> Consideration with possible action on the request to authorize a conditional use permit for a two-family home in a low-density residential district at 246 Oxford Avenue, submitted by Dalton Roche. Thank you. This application is for a conditional use permit for two families in the R1 zoning district. So as you guys are familiar with, anything that has been established as a non-conforming use that loses its occupancy for more than 12 months has to go back before the commission before being reestablished. So this property in particular was being used as a two-family, lost its non conforming status, so the CUP would be to regain that status. Um, the area itself is predominantly um, solidified for single-family low density use. There's a park nearby, and then for the zoning, again, mostly just R1 surrounding without the park nearby. This is the property at the corner of Oxford and Dousman. Um, it looks like a single-family home, and it functions much like that. There are two separate entry points for both of the units. They do have a shared parking on the back, which is off of Dustman, which has enough for three paved spots and two garage spots, which does meet the minimum parking requirements for a two-family use. Um, while looking at these applications, we typically look at the density of other two-family or multifamilies within the neighborhoods. So we use 300 feet as dictated by our municipal code. This is the subject property highlighted here, and everything that's outlined in orange nearby is either two or multifamily. So within the number of properties that are 300 feet, only 16% are a two or a multi-family, which we don't feel is um, over-densifying the neighborhood in that multi or two family. So with the historic use of the property being a two family, they have adequate par parking, there's no exterior renovations proposed with this use, and also with the low density around it, we do believe this is a good use with the neighborhood. So with that, we are recommending approval with the standard conditions that they have to comply with our other municipal codes in the UDC while doing any renovations on the interior. Thank you. Any discussion? Do we have any interested parties? Ellen, was wishing to speak on this? Um, I, I don't. If you have any questions, I can I can answer any questions you have. Any questions among the commission? That would entertain a motion. I'd like to move to approve in line with the staff recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the recommendation as stated. Any further discussion? Okay, I would ask you to cast your vote now. Approved. Thank you. Next item, item four, consideration with possible action and the request to amend a planned unit development at 865 Lombardi Avenue, submitted by Jason Hager, Tundra Lodge property owner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a request to amend the existing planned unit development for Tundra Lodge, which is located at 865 Lombardi Avenue. Um, Lombardi Avenue, East West, uh, Ashland Avenue, north south here. This is the southern property highlighted in red. Uh, comp plan recommends commercial for this particular area. This is an area that's been transitioning from industrial, late industrial to commercial. It's been pretty successful so far. 
Um, current zoning, there are several planning developments that are out here actually. Uh, some for the outlots, uh, the, the Tundra Lodge, and then down further some PUDs as well as some C1 zoning that represents uh, the commercial nature of the area. Um, this change, uh, well, the original planning developments came, started in 2002, I believe, updated in 2003 for signage. Now a need for another uh, change to the ordinance to expand additional signage. The reason for the request is for visibility for motorists coming along South Ashland heading northbound, being able to identify the Tundra Lodge. Tundra Lodge. And this is the reason for the request and call the signage. This is about 163 square feet or so in size. Uh, on the very southern end of the uh, building, so to speak, so it's very visible to uh, Ashland Avenue. Based on the size of the campus, um, the scale of the buildings, this site is not unreasonable. Um, so staff has a draft uh, ordinance put together that's attached within your agenda. Um, I don't think we've taken any calls on this one. We have notified affected property owners, but uh, we're recommending approval subject to the draft ordinance. <coughs> Thank you. The applicant is here as well. Thank you. Any discussion among the staff? Our permission? Would the applicant wish to speak? I can, if you'd like me to. I have, yeah, I have no problem making some comments. I just comment. I really like the number. Thank you. <laughs> Do you need to open the floor? I can come anybody up and address a few comments if you want. Anybody wish to open the floor, or are we good? I could have made that as a comment in the regular one, but I apologize. Okay. <laughs> There's no further discussion. The chair would entertain a motion. Move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. The recommendation. Any further discussion? Hearing none, ask that you cast your vote now. Approved. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate it. Thank you. Item 5, consideration with possible action on the request to enter into an agreement to complete the safe roads for non-drivers and bicycle pedestrian plan with Green Bay Area Public School District and Tool Design Group. Thank you. So this is a pretty exciting new project that we're working on. Um, the city's needed a bicycle and pedestrian plan for as long as the city has existed and we've never had the funding to be able to do one. So we had heard that the school district had gotten a grant from the Department of uh, Transportation, which was about $250,000 to do safe routes to school for non-drivers, which are pretty lucrative throughout the state. They not only fund the starting point where you get the data and do the study and have the report, then they also then open you up for the grant funding for the implementation of it. So with that, we decided to piggyback on that project with the uh, city kicking about 10% of the budget for that, and then we will get a bicycle and pedestrian plan as the output of that. The school district covers about 90% of the city as its own, so we really only have another 10% additional to survey, so we thought this was a good opportunity to do some collaborative work with the school district. Um, so we just had our first kickoff meeting of the advisory committee. We will be having some public meetings throughout the summer, more advisory committee meetings throughout the timeline. Um, but it'll basically just be a joint between the school district and the city. So if there are any questions, you can direct them either to our department or anyone at the school district. Um, the RDA will be hearing this tomorrow because the budget will be coming from unrestricted CDBG funds, but we're only kicking in about $30,000 and we're getting a full citywide bicycle pedestrian plan. So this will be starting the project now with anticipation wrap-up date in June of 2019. So we've got about a year and then we will have a bicycle and pedestrian plan to use to then do implementation, which will be funded through the city's budget, but then as well through the school district's grant funding. Great. Thank you. Cool.
I do have one question, Stephanie. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the, the motion is to enter into an agreement, but then in your staff report later you say you have contracted. We've, we're already in a contract, but this will uh, basically start the authorization for us to create a plan. So the city's going to do okay. this either way, but we need basically the approval to get the plan started. Okay. So we're a little late in the game on that one, but typically we're the ones funding it, so we have to do it right away to get the approval mm -hmm. to even do the project. But now we, but with, with the, the funding, we're already in covered. It was already okay. Yeah. Thank you. That helps. <laughs> that helps a lot. <laughs> Then I would move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the request. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I ask that you cast your vote. Now. Consideration with possible action on a request to amend the Green Bay Zoning Code, Section 13-1911, adjusting the time frame associated with expiration of planned unit developments. Hey, Mr. Chair, this is uh, another result of uh, Act 243, uh, state statute uh, change. This has to do with one small change in the ordinance having to do with planned unit developments and their time frame. Currently, uh, when a PUD is established, it's a one-year time period, so if they don't enact or implement that, uh, it expires. The statutory change now is for five years, and that's the basic change we're making here. So for example, with H.J. Martin and their PUD tonight, they have one year. If they don't implement it, it goes away. Uh, under this change here, they have up to five years to implement that uh, zoning. <coughs> so uh, this is required that we have to make, or have to change, so to speak, so we're recommending approval of this uh, text amendment uh, from one year to five year change. Thank you. Commissioner Bremer. So I'm understanding that you are also pointing out to us that there can be benchmarks that we establish when we uh, give permission for, for this kind of change. Right. Um, can those benchmarks be such as, uh, for instance, to start construction yes. by such and such a date? Yes, there are a few caveats, and I think that's a big one, right? We can or the Planning Commission and Council can do that. They put some okay. time parameters, but the actual approval itself can run that fine computer. But the parameters could be as broad as to begin construction. Yes. Correct. Which in effect allows us to do something very close to the current one year if we're at all concerned about the area being left untouched current. for a full five. Maybe a timeline, requesting a timeline of or phase construction from the mm -hmm. uh, applicant might be a, a okay. tool to use. Sure. We'll have to explore that as we move forward and uh, yeah. get used to this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we have any motion or further discussion? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the request. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I ask that you cast your vote now. Oh, no. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Informational, director's report. Oh, excuse me. No, yes. go ahead. <laughs> I have no director's report, unless you guys, is there something that needs to be, I don't think there is. Okay, we no. will. Director Vaughn could not be here will. tonight. He yep. had a death in the family. Yes. So uh, be a really good one next time. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> the date of the next meeting is July 9th, 2018. Uh, do we have any referral of petitions or communications? Let's start. Okay. If I could. Yes, um, Commissioner. In advance of the next meeting, there, there's one other matter with our, our change in the technology, and I appreciate uh, you being here to let us know whether we pass something or not, but shouldn't we be uh, announcing our votes in keeping with the open meetings law? 
It didn't go in the record, but for anybody in the room, they literally don't know who did or didn't vote which way or what way until, or whether something passed until it's announced. Mechanically, we just passed it. So you want us to announce it passed or it didn't pass? Or announce you want to I'm announce voting, your vote. I'm voting in favor. We could still do a voice vote and then still prompt the vote. If you'd mm -hmm. like to. I think that it should be done that way as well. We just haven't been told from the people who make more money than us to do it that way. Nice <laughs> 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 I, I would feel more comfortable with that in, in favor of, of transparency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far we've only had approvals that are across the board, but I think it'll be mm -hmm. good for anything that's okay. kind of just. So then uh, the chair would ask us to indicate our vote and then to record it, right? Sure, I can do that. You Thank may you. have to remind me next yeah, time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure. It's not on the script yet. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Can I have a last question concerning number three? Oh, sorry, oh. but we're closed. We're the floor is closed. We can talk after, after the, the, the meeting. meeting. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Uh, next thing would be adjournment. So moved. <laughs> second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Any further discussion? Very none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we all voted affirmative? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. We are adjourned. Wonderful. Thank you.